a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Let's always. 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 The Lord is good. Yeah. All the time. All the time, the Lord is good. Yeah. The scripture is good. It's good to be in the house it's of the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good I have some you know. visitors here. Oh, thank you. Now, visitors, but they're not, they're my friends. They're my friends. Good to see you. Ah, Sister Sherry and her mother, hallelujah. As a matter of fact, she's a pastor. Um, they, they, um, for those of you who don't know her, like Patrick and lovely wife, but she's a pastor. We went to seminary together. She's my buddy, and that's her mother. Hallelujah. It's good to see her in the house of the Lord this morning. And you're welcome. You can consider this home whenever time, whenever, however, just come. We just thank you. How is Daddy doing? He's doing pretty good. Well, thank you. Praying for him. We're praying. Thank you. Good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Mr. Patrick, where's my picnic? Where are my kids? You want to keep them, sir? They're sick? Yeah. Okay, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for the sick and those who are in, in, in locked in and not, not here today. We're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray, Lord God, this morning. For the sick, those who are sick. Yes. Brother Mercy, and he's oh God in Dominican Republic. Father, in the name of Jesus. Brother Ashby, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we bring them before you, Lord God. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you search wherever they are, you can find them. There's no distance between prayer, Lord God. We pray, oh God, for the children that you will move upon them, oh God, in a mighty way. Father, that healing is the children's bread, and it is indeed the children's bread. Father, we ask for bread this morning, the bread of healing, Lord God. Let it move to them, O oh God. Let it renew, renew their spirit, O oh God. Raise them up, O oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every congestion, every chest congestion, every asthmatic situation, every heart condition, in the name of the Lord Jesus, every tumor, O oh God, we come to you this morning, O oh God. And by your stripe we declare that you are healed according to your word. Lord, we send for healing this morning. In the name of Jesus, yeah. from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, be thou made whole in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. We thank you. You may be seated if you can. Pull in here so you sure can be seated. <laughs> All our seats available. Hallelujah. I, 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 my wife and I, she has to go somewhere and preach later on. And, uh, so, so I'm going to feed, feed you and feed her, and then she's going to turn around and feed me later when we go somewhere else. We're going to invite her to the minister of the church. And, um, I always love to hear when she speaks. You know, she she's a woman Amen. of wisdom, and I love her dearly. She's uh, she knows the word. She's skilled with the word, and she's just an awesome woman of God. Yeah, she's gonna preach later on right. another yeah. church. So I thank God for her, and Amen. that God has opened that door. But this morning, I I, I want to talk to you this morning about some reasons, some reasons. But before I go there, I I, I was praying yesterday and. I went into my little prayer closet and I laid there and I said, Lord, I want to minister to your people, you know. What do you want me to minister to your people? And for a minute I just lay there and didn't hear anything and just lay there and I fell in a trance, like a little trance, you know, and I drift off to sleep, just laying on my back and, you know, just, then I wake up and I said, Lord, I didn't ask you to put me to sleep. I want you to tell me what you're going to, what you want me to minister. <laughs> then I didn't hear anything and I said, okay, I'm going to, I was actually just talking to him in my mind. Don't, you know, just not mumbling, not saying anything. And I wouldn't hear a voice, but then I opened my mouth and I said, Lord, what do you want me to speak tomorrow? And then he just told me. He, in other words, he's a talking, speaking God. Amen. So Amen. he understands yes, he gives you a thought, you can think something. Yes, he but he wants you to open your mouth and say it to him. Amen. Amen. So as soon as I asked him, and I said, Lord, what do you want me to speak to your people? He gave me what to say. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak this morning on... It's actually from the reason for the Westminster Catechism. The, 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 the first question that was asked, he says, what is man's chief end? Because man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Amen. And that's actually why we were created. Yes. We were created to praise God. But we take it for such a granted sometimes that we haven't fulfilled our desires or, or fulfilled the Lord's desires. So we... Simple little things that we take for granted. But I sh I'm going to hope this morning that as I minister, you will 
come to a clear understanding of your purpose or your reason for living, and that you will begin to fulfill that purpose and that reason Amen. as you were created. So if you have your Bible, I'd like you to turn your Bible to Psalm 103. This is the granddaddy of all one of the, I mean, the Psalms, 150 Psalm, but Psalm 103 is, is almost the granddaddy of all the Psalms, if you don't think about this is This is a very powerful, powerful, powerful passage of scripture, and I just thank God that he enlightened my eyes and opened my eyes and showed me where to go, what to do, what he wants me to do. But this particular psalm, it's, it shows me some things, and I look at it and do a little background check, and then I started to ask some questions, and as I asked the question, the Lord said to me, this is your purpose. This is the purpose for which you were created. I said, okay. Let us begin. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. It says, Bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiven all thy iniquities, who healed all thy diseases, who redeemed thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. Verse 6 says, The Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He knoweth his way, he made, he made known his way unto Moses, his access to the children of men. Hallelujah. Hmm. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. Drop out to verse 13. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them. That fear him. Father, I thank you this morning for your goodness. Father, I thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the opportunity to speak your word. Thank you for the lips and tongue and the voice to declare your word. Father, I ask this morning, Lord God, that you grant unto me a clear understanding of the truths that are in your word. And as your word go forth, O oh God, I ask you to light a fire, rekindle a fire in your people, O oh God. And Lord, charge them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that they may arise and begin to declare your glory and your praise and to fulfill that duty and that thing that which you have created them, O oh God. Father, I pray that as your word go forth, that the anointing will destroy yokes, will destroy barriers, hindrance. I come against everything that is unlike God. In the name of Jesus, every hindrance that will prevent the word of God from going forth, I break it down, I pull it down in the name of Jesus. And Father, I ask, oh God, that you pour your spirit upon your people this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Psalm 103. This psalm was written by the prophet David. He was a prophet. He was also king of Israel. And this psalm was written when David was a little bit older. He had gone through some stuff, and he had come to an understanding and had experienced God's forgiveness at its greatest level. Not only did he experience God's forgiveness, he came to a place where he began to realize how blessed he was of the Lord. He started to take an assessment of his reason for living and how the Lord had treated him and how the Lord had delivered him from many things. You remember when Saul was chasing him. You remember what he was before Achish. And remember when just he slew Goliath and the many afflictions and the many things that God had delivered him from. He also remembered how God had chastised him. 
And then after that, after David started taking an assessment of all his these things in his old age, David began to do, he embarked on something that many of us would consider, if we see someone on the street doing it, we would say that they're crazy. David began to talk to himself. And sometimes we get to the place in our lives when we begin to start to self-talk. And it's not everyone that you see self-talk to themselves, they're crazy. It's when you start to answer it back, then they say, mm, lights are on, but ain't nobody home. And you, when, when you, you can talk to yourself, but when you start to answer it back, then people are going to say, yes, he's playing. He has, he's one french fry short of a happy meal. But I want you to know this. David begin to self-talk himself. Self-talk to himself. He begin to search and he begin to say some things. And David looked inwardly and he realized that David said, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He was not asking his soul to bless the Lord. David was actually commanding his soul to bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. That word bless is it's, it's the first name of our president, Barak. It means Barak. This, this is what the, the Hebrew means, bless. It means Barak. It, it means, it, 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 it comes in two forms. To Barak, it means you can either curse or bless. To say good things or speak bad things. But in this case, the word Barak is used, David is actually saying, Barak the Lord, O oh my soul. And if you look in your Bible, you see that the word Lord is in all caps, which is Jehovah. He said, Barak the Lord, Barak Jehovah, O oh my soul. The soul is a part of man that when God created the soul, we call it the, the nephish, the, 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 the nephish, the, the, the inner man. You see this. The flesh, and you, 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 you see my hearing, and you see me speaking. But the inner man, all that is in me, my soul, the breath of God, David is saying, bless the Lord, oh my soul. He's commanding his soul to bless the Lord, oh my soul. You bless the Lord. Amen. Then he went on and he said, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I can look at this, and I can see many, many reasons. But when I look back at the part, it says, he says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. I started to think of the many problems that God brought me out of. The many difficulties that he brought me out of. And when I start to think of the difficulties that he has brought me out of, where he has brought me from, and where I am now, and where he proposed to take me, I don't have to look too far to find a reason to bless him. Amen. I don't have to look around the corner. I don't have to search out how I'm going to bless him, a reason for blessing him. Yes, this is where David got his impetus. This is where David got his motivation from to bless the Lord. Yes. And now when you look around you, and when I ask you something this morning, are you breathing? You're breathing this morning. Amen. And I would ask you many times to just cup your hands like this. And you go, and you feel the air that is breathing, it's warm. The Bible said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And the fact that you're breathing out this morning is reason to tell you that you're qualified to praise God, to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. David is saying, you bless the Lord. You bless the Lord. But not only you, he said, my inner man, my soul, he's commanding his soul. Soul, bless the Lord of oh my soul. That's right. And then when he says, I'm saying, all that is within me. When he goes to all that is within me, David is talking my inner man. Yes. Every part, every body organs. My heart, my lungs, my liver, my kidney. Every part, my inner man, David went, went in and said, listen, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And he says, Father, all that is in me, bless his holy name. And when he talks about his holy name, he talks about a word that's called Kadash. Kadosh means holy, means different, means revere, set aside, his sacred name. Many a time, I've listened and, you know, I've heard Muslims, they talk and they pray, and when they call the name of their God, they would always say, bless his name, and oh, praise his name, but we sometimes take God for granted. David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his 
Revere her name. Bless his holy, bless his different name. Bless his sanctified name. It makes me think you can complain. David said, you can complain, but I will bless. <laughs> or you can worry, but I will bless. <laughs> you can curse and complain and find fault, but David said, I will bless him. Amen, amen. To bless the Lord is speaking good things about him. He woke me up this morning. He watched over me. He put me down last night. I didn't have to get up this morning, but I'm up this morning. I can breathe. I can move. I go out and I come in. Ah, he fed me this morning. I, if I didn't want to eat, if I didn't eat, it's my choice. But I have more than enough to eat. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You wonder why you were created? I asked that question, Lord, why you create me? I would ask them, um, Lord, you create me so you know my needs, and I need this, and I want that, and I want this. So, Lord, you create me so provide this for me. And sometimes you don't hear an answer. But rather than asking for this and asking for that, let us fulfill what he has created us for. The Bible said he created us for his pleasure. Yes. What is his pleasure? Ah, to send a perfume to him. When you start to worship him and bless him, the, you, your praise goes like an incense to him. It yes. smells no, good. Yes. And I can visualize God. It smells good. Where is it coming from? And the Bible said, he inhabits the praises of his people. And as you bless the Lord, you begin to speak good things about him. He's a wonderful God. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the first and the last. He's my supplier. He's my battle axe. He's my strength and my shield. Oh, he's my holy Lord. He's my way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's the shepherd of the flock. He's the Lamb of God. Oh, I'm going to talk some good things about him. He delivered me when I was out. He lifted me up when I was out. He clapped my feet in high and broad. Oh, he secured and sustained me. I will bless the Lord of my soul. And all that is within me. Glory to God. Bless his holy name. In mm, Jesus. David is actually telling his soul. He's commanding and he's the king. Sometimes you can't tell people what to do. Yeah. It starts with you. You, 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 you be the example. Amen. Amen. I don't care what you want to do. I don't know what your motives are, but I know what my motives is. I know where he brought me from. Oh, I know what he has done for me. And I have no recourse but to bless the Lord. And I'm going to come out. Oh, my soul, don't take it for granted. Oh, that is within me. Bless his holy name. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I got to bless him. Amen. Then he went on in verse 2 in the Shabbat. He went in verse 2 and then he invoked the same thing. He said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And then after he, he repeated in the first verse, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me. And then in verse 2, he went on again and he invoked the same thing. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And then he gave the reason. He said, Ah, and forget not all his benefits. Yeah. He said, all the benefits, have you, been, have, you, have you been a beneficiary of some things from God? Are uh, uh, you driving, you get up out of your house this morning, and you got in your limousine, and you might not see it as a limousine, but it's your chariot. You got in your chariot, and you were able to drove, and you turned the heat on, and it was right. warm, and you drove to church this morning. Then he said, ah, oh, these are his benefits. You're working, you're moving this morning. You can move, you're not in a wheelchair, shooting along, or you can lift your hand. Those are his benefits. Ah, oh, you're at this morning. Morning. If you want to, you have food in your stomach. Oh, those are his benefits. You have a roof over your head. Ah, you're not living under a bridge. Oh, you are living in a country where you're secure. And everyone can come in here and you do to you what they want to. You are protected. These are his benefits. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is in me. And forget not all his benefits. Amen. Amen. David saying, we have some benefits from the Lord. <laughs> Ah, the Lord benefits. We are, we, we, are, we are recipients of his benefits. Mm. So many diseases are going all, all over you. You, you don't know what he saved you from this morning. Yes. You're driving here and some drunk could have come out of nowhere and hit your car and wipe you off. Ah, those are his benefits. Ah, ah, ah. When you look around, you see some diseases and all kinds of uh, diseases. That you don't know what kind of disease he saved you from. Ah, you go to certain places and they, they, they die like flies. Ah, ah. Mm -hmm. In Japan, they just had a tsunami and an earthquake. Not so at your house. Mm -hmm. He protects so these are his benefits. Yeah. Bless the Lord of my soul and forget that all his benefits. Hallelujah. You see, sometimes we have a tendency to forget. We are sometimes we become forgetful people. 
Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Me, myself, and I. Get all I can, can all I get, and sit in the can. But if you want to know who God is, you want to remember who he is. The Bible said, in order for you to bless him, you don't have to look too far. The Bible, to, 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 it goes like it says, to, to be thankful is to be thankful. When you start thinking about what he has done for you, you're going to say, thank you, Lord. Ah, you won't complain so much. Ah, you get a little headache and you start, oh, Lord, I want to heal. You, you, heal. You, 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 you get a little pain in your back and you find your stomach hurt or something wrong. The first thing you think, I'm going to die. Ah, when he heal you, come out of your hospital, come out of your bed. You say, mm, yeah, these are his benefits. Yeah. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Let his, bless his holy name. Amen. Forget not all his benefits. You want to know why you can you 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 you, you, want, you, you want to praise him? Oh yeah. And I got ten fingers. If one of them cut off, I can't grip properly. They, they all have functions. Mm. I can hear. I can speak. I can see. Them. They're not leading me around blind. I can see. I can walk. You might look and say, but, 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 but Pastor Anderson, everybody has that. No, not really. But the thing about it is, there's some who had it, and they lost it. That's right. There were people who were born, can see, now they're blind. Yeah. There are those who are born, born, and they can run and walk and move, now they're in a wheelchair. Sometimes, now some of them are laying in the hospital bed, can't move. Yeah. They're paralyzed. Yeah. <laughs> there are those who are deaf, who are born, can hear, now they're deaf. Yeah. They can't hear the birds singing anymore. They're blind. They can't see the flowers anymore. Ah, they can't move around as they walk. No people have to be carrying them. Sometimes you don't wait till you get to that place before you're blessing. While I live when I praise him. All David said, oh, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You don't wait till you get to that place. Then you want to give God what's left. I remember the stories told about a young lady in a church. When the minister called for the altar call, church is packed out and everybody's going up and, you know, they give their life to the Lord and she, they asked her and she still wouldn't get up and just everyone that comes to the altar, the minister would give them a beautiful flowers. And she sat there and then she sat there and they talked and talked and begging for her to come and she wouldn't. And everyone that came to the altar, you know, and going back to the seat, the minister would give them a beautiful, just a nice flower. And then when she about to leave the church, he asked her, she said, he said, can I get a flower? He said, sure. And he looked for the most withered flowers and he gave it to her. She said, why this one? Why you gave me everybody a lovely flowers and you gave me this one that's withered and blighted? He said, because of what you told me. She said, what did I tell you? You asked me why I don't come to the Lord now and I told you that I'm going to wait until I'm a little older. The minister said to her, that's why I'm giving you this flowers when it's old and withered. Because that's what you want to give to God. Ah, uh, David said, I'm not going to wait till, ah, uh, I might be old now and have something, but I'm going to bless the Lord on my soul and all that is within me. I think in Psalm, it's a Psalm, it says, in Psalm 106, Psalm 106, I want you to look at, for me, Psalm 106. Sorry, Psalm 77. Look at Psalm 77. Psalm 77. When it comes to worship, David did some things that a lot of people couldn't understand. Look at verse 11. He says, I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders, O Lord, of old. What he say? He said, I will remember the works of the Lord. He said, what he say? I will remember them. Bring them to remembrance. Amen. When you're a grateful people and you see what God has done for you, the way he has treated us. Amen. The many times we reviled him. The many times we ignored him. The many times we didn't listen to what he has to say. All right, now. The many times he instructed us. Mm -hmm. 
And despite he instructed us and tell us what to do, we still wander away and out of his compassion and his tender mercy, he still look after us. David went on in Psalm 145, 10, he says, All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy sage shall bless thy name. When David talked about the saints, the saints are the called out one, the set aside one. The saints are the one who God has selected and said, I want this one, I want that one, I want this one, and I set them aside. David is saying, You have seen fit to set me aside, you have seen fit to call me your own. Now, Saul, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. One of his benefits is that he put me aside. Amen. Many a man and woman would, would have loved to be put aside and said, God, you set me aside for himself. God don't choose no drunk. He ain't choose no drunk. And then David went on, he says, forget not all, he says, who forgive at verse 3, says 103, Psalm 103, verse 3 says, Forget not all who forgiveth all thine iniquities. All my iniquities, past, present, and future, who forgiveth all my iniquities. My moral standard was depraved. I was mischievous, and my iniquity was great. I had a lot of evil, a lot of thoughts. My rightful deserve was to be punished, set aside. But not only did he forgive all my iniquities, the Bible said he healed all my diseases. For with my iniquities come the disease, the disease of death. The disease of the iniquity, and the disease would come with the iniquity. When I missed the mark, I, I incurred on me a curse. He said, not only did I forgive you, Redeem your life. Not only did I forgive all your iniquities, I heal all your diseases. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, He sent His word and healed them. Mm -hmm. He healed them. He says, Bless the Lord of my soul and forget the Lord His benefit. Who forgiven all my iniquities and healed all my diseases. Then He went to and He said, Who redeemed my life from destruction? I want you to understand this. When he said, redeem it my life, who redeem it my life from destruction. He's saying that I was in a state where I had some iniquities. I incurred the curse of death upon my life, and I was sold over because of sin, set aside for destruction. I was going to hell. Wide open. I paid the price to get there. I did everything and made work over time to get to hell. But the Bible said, He forgiven all my iniquities, healed my diseases, and He went back and He paid the price to redeem me that I didn't go to hell. That's what it says here. He redeemed my life from destruction. Not only did He redeem my life from destruction, the Bible said, He crowned me with loving kindness and tender mercies. These are reasons to praise him. When I said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, there's a reason. The great preacher Spurgeon, he says, you can, you can curse, but I'm going to bless. You can complain, but I'm going to bless you. He said, you can speculate what you're going to do, but I'm going to bless him. David went on, he said, while I live, will I praise him. Amen. While I'm in the land of the living, I will give him glory. Amen. While I have my being, I'm going to give him Amen. praise. Do you understand the reason you're living this morning? Yes. Do you understand the reason that you were created? You were created to give him praise. Stay with me. Stay with me. Enlighten you to something in a little while. 
Ah, I want you to look at Psalm 146, verse 1. Here it is, David is going over the same thing again. He says, praise ye the Lord. And when he talks about praising the Lord, he's saying, you, this word now that for praise that he's using here is not the same word as blessed. This is a different word. This is the word hallelujah. From the word hallelujah, you can hear halal. He says, you halal the Lord. You hallelujah the Lord. He's saying, the word first word says, praise ye the Lord. He's saying, you praise the Lord. Then he said, he goes on, he says, ye praise the Lord. He says, praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Again, he's calling back, calling back to his soul and says, I'm a, you praise the Lord. But oh soul, praise the Lord also. Amen. Amen. Why are you living? You ever give a child something and they forget to say thank you? And you repeat the same thing over again just to hear the, the child say thank you. I have been trained and don't, don't know anything. Don't really know. You give him and he just takes it and grabs it and just run off with it. No oh, thanks. Okay. Mother took her, her daughter or her son to look for a friend. You know, she got to the house and the friend was so happy to see the mother and the daughter and friend took an orange and gave to the child. Hi, here, hi. And the mother said to the child, what do you say? The child looked at the person and said, give him my ears and said, peel it. Forget to say thanks. The mother said, what do you say? She said, peel it. Many of us are like that with the Lord. He has provided for you. He has sustained you. You are one foot just about to go over the edge and he catch you. And you forget that you're supposed to praise him and give him glory. And we walk around all day and forget to give God praise. It's not a physical. I'm just telling you the reason why you were created. In case you wonder, what should I do? What, 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 what? Why was I created? The Bible said he created you in his own image and likeness. He created you to give him praise, to worship him, to speak good things about him. And the Bible said, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showing his hand of work. The trees are waving in the wind and giving him praise. And when you look at the tree when they're, when they're growing, you, 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 you can put the seed in the ground and from the, from the seed, die in the ground and germinate and it comes up and the limb, the little stalk come up. The, the stalks, he didn't start pointing down again. The stalk, start, the stalk of the tree start pointing upward, looking up to he who made it. And as the branches on the tree grow, they start to wave in the wind, giving glory to God. The Bible said the trees of the field clap their hands. The ocean roar and give him praise. The mountains quake at his presence. The wind blow and give him praise. The cloud moves and he rides upon the wings of the, man, the wind. Ah, the animal jump and skip. The bird praise him. Oh, the men stand round and forget that we are supposed to give him praise. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Amen. You gotta give him praise. Amen. Ah, Amen. Hallelujah. You don't tell you that you don't do it. The rocks will cry. Oh, hey, no yeah. rocks will praise him for me. Amen. I got a voice. I got to praise him. Ah, David said, Ah, after I have a time to I couldn't praise him enough. Mm -hmm. Words are not enough to praise him. So yeah. when I can't speak anymore, I'm going to be rocking him. I'm going to be rocking back and forth and lifting my hands and lifting and waving and skipping and jumping, just giving him praise yeah. because he's worthy. Ah, to be yeah. thankful is to be thankful. Yeah. When you look at where God has brought you from, some of you didn't have anything and it sustain you and provide for you and hook you up real nice and oh you're supposed to praise the Lord oh you just lift your hands and say Lord I thank you this morning Lord I praise you this morning oh for your goodness and your mercy Lord oh when I was sick you heal me just lift your hands and say Lord I praise you bless the Lord talk to your soul sometimes and tell Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Ah, you, 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 know, you don't want to do it to so feel like doing it. But you don't want to feel, you don't necessarily have to feel anything to do it. Oh, you got to give him praise. 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 Oh, you got to
gotta be broke I do. So now you don't wanna do it. You don't feel like doing it. I don't wanna do it. But when you think where you brought it from, ah, he's reason for you to jump when you feet and lift your hands and say, bless the Lord of my soul for all that is within me. Ah, you have been good to me. You heal me. You secure me. You sustain me. You watch over me. You protect me. Ah, you deliver me from the hand of my enemy. Ah, bless the Lord of my soul for all that is within me. I got to give him praise. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus, for He's worthy to be praised. Ah, that's why I was preaching. For that very reason. He says, Redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowned thee with loving kindness. Ah, the kindness of the Lord is a crown to my head. When I look around and I lost my job, you kick somebody up and say, Give him that one. They made me work for weeks, two, three weeks, and paid me. And I didn't, they, they made, as a matter of fact, they made me sit around for two, three weeks and didn't have nothing to do, and they still paid me. I said, what happened? I didn't even wait for it. Ah, oh, bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. His loving kindness is a crown around my head. You know what kindness is? Kindness is God seeing what you need and just giving it to you. Amen. Kindness is God's unmerited favor, uh -huh. grace. Uh, yes. you, don't, you, you don't deserve it, but he gives it to you anyway. Yes. Ah, yes. kindness is God saying, oh, I'm going to send my son. Ah, yes. you don't deserve it, but I'm gonna, I love you so much, I'm going to send my son to die for you, Ooh. to redeem you, and I'm, to buy your back. I've got to pay a price. You had a debt that you couldn't pay. I am willing to send my son to pay a debt that he didn't owe. Ah, just to redeem your life from destruction. Oh, you have to praise him. You must praise him. It's your duty to praise him. There's a reason for you to praise him. You can't take it for granted. Bless the Lord of my soul. Yes. Oh, that is within me. Bless his holy bless name. Mm. Bless the Lord. Yes, the Lord. yes, his kindness. Oh, he went on and he said, yes, Lord. the tender Lord. mercies. Lord. We talk about mercy. Mercy is a sense of compassion also. But also, although his tender mercies is, is compassion, you don't need mercy if you're not guilty. Mm -hmm. Mercy supposes guilt. So when you go to the Lord and say, I'm guilty, he says mercy. When you go before the court, you're guilty. The judge says, you know, I know you're guilty, but I'm going to sentence you. <laughs> but sometimes, rather than going through a lengthy trial, and you know that they're going to find you guilty anyway. You can just look at him and say, Your Honor, I'm guilty. Mm -hmm. And I throw myself at the mercies of the court. Right. When you throw yourself at the mercy of the court, they say, You know something? I'm going to take it under consideration. If you're going to trial, we'll have to stop 12 people from their job to come and sit jury. That's money they're wasting. Mm -hmm. We'll have to pay the district attorney and the lawyers for their time. That's money they're wasting. But oh, you didn't put us through the ringer. You tell us the truth. They say you're guilty, but you desire mercy. But ah, oh, that's the court. That's man's prerogative. Man will give you mercy. And although they give you mercy, they may still give you time. They said, oh, you were supposed to get 20 years. We're only going to give you 10. You're still suffering. But when I go to God, and I go to God, and I say, Lord, I am guilty. I am yes. guilty of sin. Born in sin. Shackling in iniquity. I am sin in my mother conceived me. No good thing. Ah, oh, my thoughts are evil. My desires are evil. I am fallen. I'm messed up. Lord, I'm guilty as child. Need mercy. Need mercy, Lord. He said, oh, his mercy endureth forever. And he gives me God's and great. He gives me his unmerited favor. Ah, oh, that's a reason for me to praise him. Because I'm, he didn't give me, he didn't, he didn't give me a partial mercy. He gave me full mercy. He said, not only I'm going to I'm, 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 I'm going to give you full mercy. I'm going to send my son to redeem you for the past, the present, and the future. I'm going to give you a home. I'm going to watch over you. I'm going to secure you. I'm going to sustain you. For my mercy endure forever. Ah, oh, I have a reason to praise him. I remember I was in a situation about to be separated from my family. Went in a situation and I was guilty. Yes, I was guilty as child. <laughs> Your pastor was on the road, they're always right. Your pastor was messed up, screwed up, buckeyed, bug me. He, was, he, he wasn't playing with a full deck. Ah, his mind was gone all over there. And God chased him this way, and he ran from God and went that way. And when we went that way, God 
catch him over here and turn him around and he slipped over there and God chased me. And I feel his foot in my back like Job said. Every time I run from him, he put his foot in my back. I feel him kicking me. Turn this way. It was the right thing to do it. And I was rebellious. Son. And he hooked me up with a fish. Every rebellious creature, God have a fish for every rebellious, every rebellious, every rebel. <laughs> ah, yes. When the fish came beside the boat, they said, mm -hmm. right beside that ship, they're going to throw something over there. Catch it. Don't chew. Just swallow it. Oh, God caught me. And when he caught me, I said, mm hmm. Let me get you to pray. You, your prayer life is getting a little slack. Ah, uh -huh. uh, yes, 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 yes. But I gotta put you, you get too comfortable. I want you to fast and pray again. You never fast for 30 days or 20 days. I'm gonna put you to fast for 40 days. You wonder what it feels like? Oh, I'm gonna put you in so much trouble that you were glad to give me fasting. You were glad to turn the plate down. Ah, oh, when I need a messed up and I need a pardon. The Lord said, I pardon you for your sin. Already, but I'm going to put you in a situation where you're going to need man's compassion. And me, because I'm God, ah, the Bible said the heart of a king is in the hand of my God. And like a river of water, he turned it to be will. I'm going to put you in a position where you've got to go down your knees and turn your plate and pray to me and fast and worship me and ask me to turn the hearts of men so they can give you what you desire. Amen. That's his mercy. Amen. Amen. And when I pray you, over two, 1,100 or 1,500 people applied to Governor Patterson for a pardon. Mm -hmm. We only gave 24 of them. Ah, mine was number eight. Uh -huh. Eight is the number of new beginnings. The Lord said, I'm going to give you a new beginning. I'm going to pardon you because I know who you I know you will preach my word. I'm going to take your places where your checkbook can't take you. But when you get there, invoke people and tell them what they ought to do. Others can praise their idols. Others can praise their possessions. Others can talk good about the neighbors. Others can cuss and swear. But as for me and my house, we will bless the Lord. And not only me and my house, but all that is within me, my soul. All the magnify the Lord within me. My spirit rejoices in the God of my salvation. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Ah, bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I got to praise him. But I remember where he brought me from. I got to praise him. In verse 5, he said, Who satisfied thy mouth with good things? Not stupid things, mm -hmm. good things. I like good things. I like to, I'm a connoisseur of food. I like food. I can cook. My wife will tell you I'm a bad chef. I can cook. <laughs> and I go and I like sweet things. I like dessert. I like nice things. And uh, when I feed for something, I told my wife a couple of months ago from last year, I said, if I feed for something, I'm going to buy it because I know that tomorrow is promised to me. Amen. I feel for eating something, I'm going to buy it. Right. I'm going to eat it. I don't know if I live. God provided for me. I, 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 people say, save it for the rainy day. Oh, you got to put away some for the rainy day. Well, let me tell you, it's raining now. Yeah. Uh, the Lord is good, and I'm going to bless him at all times. Uh, wait for the rainy day. The Bible said, he satisfies our mouth with good things. He says, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. I looked at this this morning, and it blew my mind. Just this past week, so that so that our youth is renewed like the eagle. It took me on a whining, and it made me start to think. And it gave me more reasons to praise him. He satisfied my mouth with good things for a reason. The reason is in order, in all of that, so that my youth is renewed like the eagle. But then I started to look at the eagle. And when I started to do the little search, they said that the scholars have told you that an eagle can live to over a hundred years old. An eagle. And when he looks old and machated and you feel that he's dead and he can't go no more, the, the scholars said the eagle goes up on a rock in a high place. So. And there's a, there's a process they call molting. And he hugs the rock up on a cliff and he started to beat his wing against the cliff. Oh. Beat his wing until it's bloody and then he picks out every feather. Oh, he's almost a hundred years old. He's Picks out every feather and emotionally beats it until the wing, then the blood starts coming and clouds the rock with blood, and all the feathers are beaten out and plucked out. The scholar said that he stayed here for two, three days, sometimes a week, from normal period of time is 21 days, which is fasting. Normally, he stayed here for 20, three weeks, don't eat nothing. It's 21 days. And within that 21 days, 
his feathers start to grow again. They come young and plumy and look good. And then he starts to just grow to get brand new feathers. And then, ah, oh, you look at his stretches of wing and he starts to flex them. And all of a sudden he lifts off of the cliff and he started to fly higher. He doesn't look old anymore. He looks young and blue like a young eagle again because his strength is renewed. He went through the process. Oh, he went through the process. And he soars higher this time and he goes faster. And when you think the eagle at 100 years old should die, he just begins to live. Oh, so when the Bible says, I satisfy my, my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagle. He's telling me, I'm going to renew your strength. I'm going to make you stronger. I'm going to make you more vigilant. I'm going to make you more vibrant. I'm going to make you soar higher. You're going to go faster. Oh, because I satisfy your mouth with good yes, things. Oh, it's a good thing to trust and serve the Lord. Oh, you look at people who have not been serving God for a while. They're in sin. And you look at them and you can see sin written all over them. They're messed up. They're 20 years old and they look like 99. Ah, they look old and shaken, beaten up by life. Ah, the sun beat them. The snow surprised them. The rain washed them. They look like they're, they're, they're young, young, young. Oh, but the life and the vicissitudes of life have wrecked their lives and they look old. But as they come to the Lord, after a while, you see they start looking pale and they're looking nice and their skin starts to change and they start looking younger. Something just starts to happen to them when they get a relationship with God. The Bible call it grace. The, the, the Bible and the scholars are called it grace lift. Because the Bible says, He yeah, it beautified the meek with salvation. So when you come to the Lord, He renew your strength. You were old and tired and wouldn't be able to do anything. But when you come to the Lord, He renewed your strength like the eagle. Oh, and you start looking young again. Ah, things that you've missed and you missed out on and you've lost. He said, I'm going to restore it to you. Like the years of the caterpillar, the power work, the conqueror. All of your blossom I'm going to give it back to you. I'm going to give it to you in good strength. Oh, he satisfied my mouth with good things. Amen. Gotta praise him. Amen. My strength is renewed like the eagle. And then in verse 6 he says, the Lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. That word the Lord, that also is in all cap. The Lord being Jehovah executed Meaning that he makes, executed, he finishes, he follows through, he maintains, he performs, he practices, he prepares, he procures, he provides, he sacrifices, he serves, he executed, all these, he executed righteousness, straightness. For all that are oppressed, meaning that he restore, and if he goes out and he does some his decrees for all those who are oppressed, it tells me that he says execute righteous judgment. But of course, he's a righteous judge; he's a just judge. So when the Bible says that he executes. He executed righteous, righteousness and judgment. It telling me that, Brother Hamilton, you're not just left up to the enemy to do what he wants to do with you. He may oppress you for a while, but the God that I serve, who's a just God, he executes righteous judgment. Yes. So keep messing with me. I will poke in your eye. He's going to say, Hamilton is the apple of my eyes. You mess with him, I'll wipe you out. I'll screw up the moon and drop it on your head because it belongs to me. I am the just judge. He's not left up to your whims for you to do with him whatever you want to do. Oh, and if you look all through the Bible, you see where the children of Israel, they suffered for many times. And God called them to suffer and took him taken away in captivity. Ah, but he said, regardless of that, I use you to change them and because even I use you to chase them and chastise my children when they're rebellious, I'm still gonna punish you because they still belong to me. And if you notice, even the children of Israel when they were taken away in Babylon, mm. and King Nebuchadnezzar and these big 
lofty nations oppress them. After a while, the Lord said, mm, you, I, I gave you a little opportunity to oppress them, but you've gone too far. Ah, you overstepped your bound. I gave you just a little bit to oppress them, but now I'm going to pull in the rain. As a matter of fact, I'm going to kick you onto the land and give it to them. Oh, he executed righteous judgment. I'm not left up to the whims of the enemy to do with me as he feels like, when he feels like. God got to stop watching the enemy. I hear the Lord is saying, oh, you can go so far and no more. You got to stop here. You go this far. You oppress them this far, but yeah, I'm coming down and executing righteous judgment. You gotta leave them alone right now. Oh, I hear the Lord say, I'm stepping into some of your circumstances. I'm gonna turn things around. Oh, they have oppressed you on the job. Oh, they make you feel like you don't belong there. Oh, they make you feel like you're not wanted. Oh, the Lord said, I'm gonna step in. I'm gonna turn them upside down. Oh, I'm gonna clean the clock. I'm gonna kick them through the door. Oh, the Lord, you're gonna go back to work and see some of them packing their bags. And what happened? They fired me. Oh, and when they fired me, you know where you're going? They're moving. Take this position. Ah, oh, because the Lord executed righteous judgment. You oppressed me too long. I gotta give him praise. I gotta give him praise. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. He's a good God. He's a mighty God. He's holy and upright and just and true. Oh, the Bible said he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. In other words. When he was leading them through the wilderness, there's a little songwriter that says, The Lord know the way in the wilderness. All you have to do is follow. Strength by today is mine all the way, and all I need for tomorrow. The Lord know the way in the wilderness. You might be going through the wilderness now, but keep walking with the Lord. He will tell you where, where he's going to tell you how to go through the wilderness. Ah, because he's going to show you where every watering hole is. He's going to show you where every secure place you can rest your head at, because he's a water of life. Ah, he's going to show you where to go pick up the manna. He know where to direct the quail to come to you. You might be going through the wilderness now, but I tell you, the Lord know the way through the wilderness. The Bible Said he showed Moses his way. Ah, he made known his way unto Moses, his action to the children of Israel. When he showed Moses, said, walk this way, go that way, turn there so, look over there. Oh, and he showed Moses. He said, you want to see my acts? You want to see my act, Moses? Let me show what I can do. You're in there, the, the, the Egyptians coming after you, Moses. The two mountains, we have the, one on your right and one on your left, and the Red Sea before you. Moses, you want to see my act? Ah, Moses, trip for your ride, and you see my act. I'm the God that can part the Red Sea and say, go through on dry land. Oh, your enemy want to come up to you? Oh, I use them as fish bait, Moses. Oh, let them come, let them come. I got some fish down there that needs to eat. Come on, chase them too. And I cover them with the water. The fish eat. So, but you go free. I hear the Lord say, Ah, oh, he's a just God. Amen. You want to see my act, Moses? The people are complaining that they're thirsty. Moses, speak to the rock. Ah, I, I, I give you water. Moses, they're complaining about food. Let me show you my act, Moses. Oh, here's manna, Moses. Oh, whatever it tastes like, whatever you want it to be, that's what it is. He shows his acts unto the children of Israel. Amen. That's the God we serve. Do you understand how big and bad your God is? Oh, yeah. Do you understand that you're not just left up to the devil to do what he wants to do? Right, Some of the problems that you're going through, could it be that God is shifting you and strategically positioning you for, yeah. for what he wants to give to you? Not every trouble is trouble. Sometimes trouble is just for you to stretch your muscles and get bigger and get stronger, for you to know what you can handle. But God is preparing you. I hear the Lord say, he shows his acts unto the children of Israel. Then the Bible said, in verse 8, he says, the Lord is merciful, great and gracious, slow to anger. And then he goes back and says, I'm plenteous in mercy. You want to know if he's merciful? When was the last time you messed up? This morning? Yesterday? A mm, couple minutes ago? Mm -hmm. You want to know if you mess up, you mercy. is mercy endured forever. The Bible said, where sin abound, grace much more abound. As much sin as you have, he has much more grace. Ah, but that doesn't give you the right to go out and mess up consistently. Because yeah, mercy has more mercy than sin. Ah, because when you love him, he says, if you love me, you keep my commandment. And my commandment is not grievous. So when you love him, when you realize that he's showing so much mercy to you, and he loves you so much, and he provides for you so much, why would you want to go offend him? Why would you want not to praise him? Why do you want to continue? In your city. You gotta love him for what he has done for you. You gotta love him for who he is. He is God and God alone. Ain't nobody God like God. Our God can do is be God. He can't be nobody 
is but God. God is God. Ain't nobody is like God. He's the only and righteous God. His mercy endureth forever. I've said he's long suffering. Slow to anger. Sometimes things happen to us. The minute it happens to us, you say, Oh God, I don't love you no more. But if you know, if you if you really, really get to know him, you realize that his mercy is with you. Many times the problem that you saw yourself in, when you get out of it, you say, wow, I saw that problem over here. It was just only happy. It only happened to get me to move to where he wants me to be. That's right. Not all problems come to kill you. Some problems come to make you. Not all problems is going to break you. Some problem might break your stubborn ways. And cause you to drop to your knees and acknowledge him and give him glory. Well, all, right. all when he does it, he does it well. The yes. Bible says, all God does all things well. Yes. He goes back and says, he will not keep, he will not always chide. Neither will he keep his anger forever. Mm. Man. I like that kind of God. You do some things that someone when they see you after a while, and you, you, even when you apologize, they have to keep reminding you of what you did. <laughs> Not so with God. He lets you know I forgive you. And when he tells you, you I confess it to him and he forgives you, you go back to him and say, I don't know what you're talking about. You keep digging up dirt. I forgive you, I forgive you. He's that, guy, he's that kind of God. He can forget it. Amen. But one thing he always tells you, he says, I am your God. I'm the Lord thy God. He made you know where he brought you from. He said, I'm the Lord thy God. He brought you out of the house of bondage. You were in sin and a savior. You belong to me. The fact is that you didn't initiate contact. He initiated contact with you. And as he initiated contact with you, he tells you, I am your God. You belong to me. I brought you out. And the reason why I brought you out is for you to worship me. For you to praise me. Let me give you some examples. In Psalm 9, verse 9, David said, The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in the time of trouble. Have you ever been in trouble and you run to the Lord and you want your refuge? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In Psalm 100, in Psalm 10, verse 4, it says, Thou hast seen, for thou hast behold the mischief of the spirit and spirits, and required with thy hand the poor committed himself unto thee, and thou art my helper. Have you ever seen mischief when people just nag you, you get mischief when you commit yourself for the Lord and he help you? Ah, in Psalm 12, verse 5, it said, For the oppressors of the poor, for the sign of the needy. Now will I arise, said the Lord, I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. Mm. Have you ever in trouble and just check out God and ask God and he just step through and start to help you? Mm -hmm. And your enemy feel like, oh, I got one upon you? And they decide they want to exact all the pressures upon you? I'm going to really suck it to you? And you within yourself know that you really deserve it. But God in his mercy come to us and I'm going to wipe your enemies out anyway. Young lady, she hired me. Went on three-day fasting and locked it in and locked in the church and got me a job. Came out of my fasting and there were two jobs open. I went into the wrong one and cried almost every day going to work. Turned the other job. No, I don't want it. I'm taking this one. I said, okay. And I went to the other job and worked there for over a month and a half. Cried every day going to work. Didn't like it. Supervisor gave me Gahena. And I was doing the right thing. They wanted me to cook the books so they could get Medicaid money. And I said, I ain't doing it. And it stopped pressuring me. And I called up the other job that I turned down and told him I... How are you doing? Did you find somebody for the position? They said, no, we're still looking. I said, I'm not happy where I am. They said, 
two days after they find me from that job, they said, come aboard. When God opened a door, even if you walk away from it, he kept it open and no one can shut it. That's right. Even when you turn away and say, I don't want it. He says, okay, I let them turn the heat up over here because I don't want you there, I want your hair. <laughs> and he gave it to me. He kept the door open. Yeah. Went to another job. Simple little thing went down. This new job, simple little thing went down. Looked at one person and tell him, I don't speak Spanish that well. This case is you. You're the Spanish speaking interpreter. Gave me the bits and didn't want to take the case. Supervisor said, You should have taken it. I said, I don't speak Spanish, but I understand what forced her to learn Spanish. I said, No, nah, can't do that. Social workers, they meet the client where they're at. And she sighed with the other young man and dish out injustice. And he started to gloat. I have to be teaching him the computer, teaching him what he knows, promise and connection. And you see that on dish out injustice. The Lord said, I'm, I have just a little bit of it. I have enough of you. Step out of here. They fired her. Call back to my old job that I left for them to pay a medical bill that I incurred while I was there. The rocks and met, I needed to pay. Oh, rocks and met don't work with her anymore. They fired her too. The Lord knows to execute righteous judgment. Don't mess with me. I'm a child of the most high God. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't mess with me. Don't mess, don't mess with me. I belong to Jesus. Ah, oh, when people mess with you, they look at you and they don't know how you are blessed and they don't know what God is going to do with you. And they open a big slap him out and talk bad about you. You ought to drop to your knees and say, Lord, have mercy upon them because he's just getting ready to really wax the clock for them. Ah, oh, you're not left up to what the devil wants to do. The God that you serve is a just God. Ah, oh, there's a reason why I got to bless him. He's a good God. He's wonderful. He's glorious. He's mighty. He's eternal. You can't bribe him. You can't tell him, wipe Hamilton out and give me this. He said, mm, he belongs to me. Oh, you can't bribe him and tell him, I don't like him. You might not like him, but he's mine. Ball head and bearded, knock me on upside down. He still belongs to me. You don't have a right to exact upon him. Ah, you see him over there? He's praising me. He smells good. Incense. I gotta go down. When I go down and I see him praising me, the enemy comes this way, I kick him. Don't disturb my worship. I like what I'm smelling. It smells good. And if you get in front of him and upset him so he stop worshiping me, I wipe you out. Because what he's doing is fragrance. I love it. No, I have the praise of my people. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Oh, I got to give him praise. Amen. I got to worship him. When you understand who he is and what he has done for you, you must think and give him praise. Stand to your feet this morning. Oh, glory to God. Lift your hands and give him praise. Ah, you might not want, you, sometimes you're thinking about, if people see me go crazy and they hear me saying, hallelujah, glory to God, they're going to think and say, what is he doing? Oh, you don't even don't take all of that. Well, I'll tell you something. If you think you don't take all of that, don't plan on going to heaven because heaven is a loud place. There's going to be a whole lot of noise there. The Bible says, these boys are like the sound of many waters. Ah, they tell us that when we're going towards Niagara, almost 60, 70 miles away, you can hear the big falls are roaring. Niagara Falls, you're 70 miles away, and they say you can hear the big water thundering. Oh, the Bible said, his voice are like many waters. The Bible says, the angels and the cherubim, they go around the throne, morning, noon, and night, 24 hours a day, and they go on and say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, they bow down and they bow and they worship him. Ah, oh, don't plan to go to heaven if you don't like noise. Ah, oh, because my God is a noisy God. He's in the everything that has breath praise him. Praise him with the brass. Praise him with the timber. Praise him with the suffering heart. Let everything that praise him. Praise him with the high symbol. Praise him with the loud sounding symbol. Praise him with the string instrument, string instrument and organ. Ah, oh, you got to praise my God. He's a good God. Nebuchadnezzar didn't want to praise him. Glory to God. 
God provided some things for the skin. And he thought he had it all. And when he looked at all the words of his hand, he says, Is not the great, this the great Babylon that I have built over my own hands? God said, mm -mm, Not so. I give you the power. I give you the strength to build it. And let me make you know who you are. Ah, I make you eat ox like a, eat grass like an ox. Make you grow fingers by a nail like, like eagle's feather. And when I finish with you, you're going to bow down and look up. The Bible says, But after many days, Nebuchadnezzar looked up and he extolled the most high God. And he said, oh, I realize it. And I come up and I said, all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed to him as nothing. And he do it according to his will in the armies of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, what doest thou? i got to praise him. And the Bible said, never can never start to barracking. And he started to give him praise. And then he started to make a decree. Anyone who said anything bad about the God of heaven, their house, their land, their families shall be like a dung hill. Because he is God. When you understand who he is, you don't have to wonder what you're supposed to do. When you remember what he has done for you, just lift your hands and give him praise. He's worthy! Hallelujah. I got to praise him. He's a holy God. He's a righteous God. The least I can do is give him the glory and the praise. Ah, oh, oh, I want to tell you something. You want to get some things from God? You praise him. People say, oh, I'm going to praise when he's going to give me things. Yes, I have scripture to prove it. When Job was in trouble, and the Bible said when the, the devil, when the sons of God visited, come up or come to God. And God, he said, where have you been, Satan? He says, from going through the earth, to and fro the earth and having victory. He said to him, are you considered my servant Job? Oh, man upright, a man that issued evil. Oh, I love him. He praised me. And Satan looked at God and said, does Job serve you for nothing? Haven't you built an edge of protection around him? So the scripture is this. When you serve God, you'll get some things. He's basically saying to you, God, does Job serve you for naught? All that you have, you gave him. That's why he's serving you. God said, mm -hmm, not so. Give it your best shot. Take all you have from him. And he still prays. The devil said, uh -huh. yeah, but you, you take it from him, he's going to curse it to your face. Though. The, the, the Lord said, I'll remove the edge of protection. Give it your best shot. And when he went on there, they messed with Job. One day, one day, one day, one day, the servant come, Job, your, 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 your servants are dead. They attack your cattle. Your sons are dead. Your daughters are dead. Ah, oh, you're losing all your business and everything that happened. News, bad news coming after, one after the other. The Bible said Job got himself a bald head. And he ripped his clothes and take his shit, take some pop shed and start putting ashes on his head. And he stood down and he started to praise. The Bible said, Job, praise God. He said, blessed be the Lord God. He said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you praise him when things are going good? Can you say, blessed be the Lord? Can you barack him when things are going good? You've got to have to adapt the principles of Job. You don't only praise him when things are going bad. When things are going evil and wreck up, you've got to praise him. That's even more so to praise him. At least you are able to feel that things are going bad. You can identify that it's not going good. You can sense that it ain't right. Oh, I know the pain of suffering. Oh, at least if you're sensitive enough to no pain. Some people living in this world, they know no pain. Ah, it's reason for me to praise him. The Bible said, Job said, oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. Job said, as he does, he said, Job said to him, I, I live as long as I live, I praise him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Yeah. Gotta get to the place where not, no, no one hinders your praise in God. The malice of poor thoughts. You just got to say, you know something? I love God. He saved me. I got to praise him. You look at you and say, why it takes all of that? You don't understand me. Shh, talk to the hand. I got to listen to him. I know where I'm coming from. I know what he did for me. I got to lift my hands and praise him. Do you understand? God really should have wiped you out. Do you understand that? Your just dessert is for him to really mess you up. But he looked down and said, Mercy, lift your hands and praise him. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise your Lord for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Oh, hallelujah. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, you're the balm of Gilead, oh God. Oh, Lord, while I live, will I praise you. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear the rock and be glad. Blessed is the man that trusted in you. You are my refuge and my strength. 
my high tower. You are my shield and my hiding place, oh God. Oh, I bless you, Lord. I worship you. Oh, hallelujah. Soul, you can take no rest now. Soul, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who satisfy thy mouth with good things. Oh, I'm a recipient of good things, Lord. I thank you for the good things. I thank you, Lord, you've been good to me. Oh, you've been good to me, Lord. Ah, you're a wonderful God. You gave me water to drink when I was thirsty. Oh, you satisfy my longing soul. Lord, I praise you this morning. You're worthy, oh God. Oh, my lips are bless you. Thus will I praise you as long as I live. My soul, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, oh the Lord not worthy. Oh, from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. You are worthy, ever worthy, always will be worthy, forever worthy. Oh, you are the water of life. You are the bread of life. Oh, you are the day spring from an high. You are the bishop of my soul. Oh, you are the wheel in the center of the wheel. I give you praise. You are the good shepherd who giveth his life for the sheep. Oh, I give you praise, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Give him a wave of him. Just give him a wave of him and tell him thank you. Thank you for, for saving me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for thank, ah, thank you for trusting me. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I give you the praise of the glory, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 When I desired to open a church and start a ministry, I said, Lord, what should I call it? He took me over to the book of Chronicles. He said, I want you to name a ministry of victory through praise. Victory through praise. I said, Lord, back it up the scriptures. Then he started to show me the children of Israel in the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they begin to sing praise unto the Lord, they begin to sing praise to the Lord for his mercy endure forever. The enemy came to the right and on the left. The enemy in front of them and they are in trouble. They didn't know what to do. Surrounded by enemies. The Bible said as they begin to sing praises, they gather the musical instruments and the musician and they begin to sing praise. And all they begin to sing was this. They keep singing, praise the Lord for his mercy and joy forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy and joy forever. Praise the Lord for his mercy and joy forever. That's what they, that's what they, that's what they, what they kept saying. And as they kept singing, praise the Lord for his mercy and joy forever. The enemies that camped around them, who was about to attack them, the enemies start looking at each other and start killing each other. Do you know what praises do? Praises confuse your enemies, let them slaughter yes. each other. Do you understand when you start lifting your hands, some of you are in trouble and you won't praise him, you're going to stay in trouble. But if you lift your hands and start to give him the glory, some of your enemies are coming one way with fleet seven ways. All you got to do is lift your hands and say, Lord, I love you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Ah, the Bible said Nebuchadnezzar, when he started to eat grass, he was a mad man. His, his nails grow like eagles' claw. Oh, that's a, that's a sign of a madman. The Bible said he started growing hair. Oh, so long, they were like eagles' feathers. The Bible said he was out there eating grass like an ox, and on an all fours, looking like a cow, smelling like a cow, oh, moving like a cow. The Bible said when he, oh, when he we came to himself, he said he only came to himself when he looked up and started to praise God. Ah, oh, you have mental illness? Start to praising him. You regulate your mind. Ah, you, know, you feel like you're going crazy? Start praising him. Been there, done that. Some of you, you have been through so much trouble. Ah, oh, you should have been in the crazy house playing with chicken wires, and bummed up with chicken wires, and playing with crayons. But oh, he gives you, he gives you, he gives you strength. You're beginning to praise him, and he got you out of some stiff situation. All you gotta do is praise him. He'll regulate your mind. Do you know the God that I serve? He keeps you. Oh, he said he has given you the spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. You feel you're going crazy? Start praising him. He said, I give you a sound mind. Ah. Oh, not only that, I give you power and love and a soul man. All you gotta do is praise him. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. All glory to God. I'm giving you a little formula to get out of situations. Praise is coming to the upright. I'm teaching you how to get out of some situations. Do 
us to praise him. I'm not saying it doesn't really work. Yes, it works. It works. David, what do you know about this? What do you know about this, David? Hey, Brother Hamilton, the Lord told me that I'm going to be king. Saul chased me up and down the mountain. We're getting out of here now. Chased me up and down the mountain. Chased me out of my own country, out into a foreign country, where I have to dwell with some enemies over there. And I begin to praise God until the spit fall on my beard. It looked like I was a madman. But I start to praise him until the spit will fall on my beard. And they look at him, the enemies who should have wiped him out. They said, leave him alone, he's crazy. <laughs> oh, that men would praise the Lord. Oh, that men would give him glory for his goodness and his manifold kindness. Oh, he'll make known unto you visions and dreams. All you got to do is praise him, worship him. You may not know how to do it. Just start with thank you, Jesus. Give him thanks. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good. You don't know what to give him thanks for? Just like so frivolous. Chop one of your hand off and you, you, you never miss it until it's gone. You got ten fingers. Lord, I thank you. Thank you they work. Feel like they hurt you sometimes, but they hurt. So they, they, they're good, Lord. Oh, you don't know what to praise him for. You're walking around. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I bless you. Oh, you don't know what to thank you for. Lord, I thank you for my eyes. I can see your handiworks. You don't know what to praise him for? Get a drink of water and taste it. You don't know what to praise him for? Don't drink any water for about four or five days and eat no food. When thirst come upon you, get a bottle and drink it and see how much quenches it turns, how sweet it tastes. Oh, Lord, you're good. You're wonderful. I praise you. You might think it's simple, but he's worthy. Oh, hallelujah. If you don't know how to do it, just simple under your breath, Lord, teach me how to praise the master. He's a teacher. He's God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you praise. He's such a good God. Oh, he's such a mighty God. He's such a holy God. Let us start asking him, Lord. Let us renew our fire, rekindle the fire. Lord, there was a time when I used to praise you and I sort of stuck around you, but take me back to the place. Take me back to the place, Lord, where I once praised you and glorified you. Take me back to the place. Rekindle the fire, not just a spark. Let it become a big flame roaring out to God. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I will deliver your word. Oh God, I have done what I believe you've told me to do. Lord, Lord, I bring your people before you, Lord God. And I ask you, Lord, to rekindle and relight their fire. So then we begin to praise you in songs of praise in the night season. That they 
they may look within themselves and improve all the methods, all the passions, and all the things needed to praise you. That daily they, oh God, may become, they may come to the understanding of who you are. That daily they may lift their hands and not take one more day for granted. But oh God, I bring your people before you and I decree, oh God, that they have heard your word. And Lord, I pray, oh God, that as they go forth from here, that daily they will become vessels of praise. Offering of praise as an incense to you, Lord God. Daily, hourly, minute, every second, Lord God, that we will no longer take these times for granted. But just to keep remembering and saying, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I invoke your spirit upon your people this morning. Fill them, Lord God, overflowing with songs of worship and praise. Amen. Oh God, with ways and means of how to worship and to glorify you. Cause them never to forget the benefits, oh God. He said to the children of Israel, when you come into the land, be careful that you don't forget. Lord, we are in a good season. Yes. Lord, we will not forget. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Heal our heart. Heal our mind. In the name of Jesus. Father, we glorify you and we thank you. In Jesus' name. God is calling forth for worshipers. For people who want to bless Him. For people who praise Him. Another way you can bless God is by paying your tithes and offerings. Pastor Tony, Pastor Annette, will you receive the tithes and offerings from my ears? Another way of blessing God is saying, Lord, you gave me strength to work. You gave me strength to earn this living, Lord God. It all belongs to you anyway. For the Bible said, the urge of the Lord and the fullness thereof. You have given me strength, Lord God, to work for it. The least I can do is give you a portion, Lord God. Father, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for what you did. I bless you, Lord God. Ah, just put a little offering in there. Give him praise. Thank you. We bless you, Lord God. We thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus.